Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this is seven ways that marketing teams are using Asana to stay aligned. And so in this webinar, um, I'm going to walk you through, you know, how to, you know, get the most out of your Asana work management tool. You know, I see it so often that marketing teams are underutilizing their Asana workspace, you know, by you know, using it as a simple to-do list. And it's so much more than that. And so if you're here today, you are here because you want to um, learn about other features in Asana, how to upgrade your usage for Asana and how to stay productive as a team, whether it be marketing or any other department. But what I wanna help you do today is to eliminate um, duplicating work. And so um, I also wanna help you gain bit better visibility, you know, on the work happening within your space and show you, you know, how, you know, rules and automations can make things easier. And so I will be taking questions. Uh, Kate is here for my team. And so if you have a question throughout the webinar, please do not hesitate to put it in the Q&A and we'll get to it um, as best we can. So my name is Marquis. I'm the founder of Ditto, where we provide clarity throughout the organization. And so what we do is really help organize, optimize, and integrate your businesses processes, as well as a software to support it all. And so we really want to help you focus on the skilled work and not really the work about the work, all the stuff that keeps us bogged down. And so we're talking uh, today because, you know, your business um, is using Asana. But what I want you to understand from everything we're going to talk about today is that Asana is really the ground floor. Right? We can build upon that with other automations, other integrations, but I'm showing you how you can you know, elevate the usage of your current Asana instance. So this is my family. Uh, we live up in the Great White North, about an hour uh, from Toronto. Uh, and this is my wife, Talita. And these are our two boys, Jude and Luca, who is not pictured here, is our new puppy, Taco. Uh, you might hear him you know, barking in the background. Um, but you know, when I'm not optimizing workflows, you, know, you can find me either reading a book or honing my skills in photography, kayaking at least once a year. Yeah, I probably should take up my kayak a lot more. Um, playing the bass, you can see my guitar in the background, or out for a walk uh, with my family, getting to know this small town that we call home. And so Ditto, we are Asana Solutions Partners which means that you know, we're one of a handful of agencies globally that can say that we are experts when it comes to implementing the Asana work management tool. Um, other perks is we get to do things like this and speak to folks like you and educate them on how to better their usage of Asana. And you're probably thinking, that's all great, Marquis, but why should I listen to you? And so just a bit um, of background on me. I come from the corporate world where uh, you know, I learned to adapt systems on a daily basis to be successful in my role. Um, I worked as a marketing manager for a small agency for a time. Um, I actually have my own marketing agency. I started uh, close to four years ago now, uh, running campaigns of various sizes and complexities. And I've had the opportunity over the years to work with brands like Home Depot, Walmart, and Pine Sol, uh, to name a few, um, to help them you know, execute on their marketing campaigns. I'm also a speaker and presenter. Um, I'm a part-time faculty to post-secondary students, teaching them um, all these things that I do every single day. I'm an aspiring project management professional. Um, and I've learned you know, what does and doesn't work in the marketing space as well. And so what we're gonna talk about today is my secret weapon, and that is Asana. So you're on the call today, um, you're probably working from home for the first time, your team's displaced, and you're trying to figure out how to make all this work in a um, digital world. And so just a bit more about us, we've partnered with some of the top productivity and automation um, software platforms in the world. And you know we work with these platforms along with Asana, HubSpot, you know, Panadoc, um, Databox to make work more efficient for um, our customers. Our tagline is simple, duplicate yourself, right? That among other things is what we're gonna really talk about today. And so thank you for signing up. Thanks for being here. We have so much to cover today. Um, I wanna get right into it. So what we'll be covering today um, is a few things, right? We're actually going to get to a live demo in a minute. And if you stick around to the end, I have a special offering just for you, just for being here today. Um, and so stick around to the end. I'd love to chat some more about that and um, have you be able to take advantage of that as well. So we're going to be reviewing, you know, project management, you know, campaign planning. 
um, milestones and approvals, custom fields, proofing and feedback within Asana, custom rules and automations using Asana forms, looking a little bit at the newest feature overview um, within Asana, as well as timeline views, looking at portfolios, workload and capacity, dependencies, and then premium and business features. Um, because a lot of you on the call are probably using the free version of Asana or have you know, taken a trial of the premium version, but again, maybe underutilizing it and making the work too difficult. And so just to quickly kind of get us up to speed, I'm going to assume that the next few slides I'm going to show you we already know these things, right? But, you know, teams are doing amazing work together, right? Think about the time when we were actually, you know, in an office, in the same space, what collaboration looked like and how good that felt, right? But since being displaced, being remote, it's getting more and more difficult, right? And, you know, effortless work is getting harder to attain, right? Without a system to really manage that work, teams are slowly you know, um, you know, they move more slowly, sorry, they're, they're missing deadlines, you know, um, they fail to live up to, you know, their full potential. And really what that can look like is not knowing who is doing what and by when, right? Notifications and meetings, you know, that disrupt your work, disrupt your day, right? Finding and gathering that data um, from different tools becomes more difficult. And most importantly, prioritizing the work as the business priorities shift, right? And so these are some of the compounding um, effects or, you know, impacts on this work about work, right? I'm going to say that a few times today. I want you to catch that, right? And there can be profound impacts to your team, like um, reduced productivity, you know, worsened customer experience, decreased innovation, burnout, uh, challenges, you know, that, um, you know, you have, you know, attracting talent, right? Uh, I'm sure we can all identify with a few of these things here, myself included, um, and, you know, from a, a recent stat from, from 2017, actually, it was, you know, um, found out that, you know, 60% of our time, you know, annually is spent on this work about work, all the in-between things, wondering where a file is, wondering what the status on something is, right? Wondering where to put that thing or what, what the deadline is, or, you know, how do I access or how do I do this thing that we haven't done in several months, right? And so... Beyond that, 27% of our time is actually spent on skilled work, the work that we're hired to do, the work that our clients hire us to do, right? And so we're wasting so much time. And just to give you a few more numbers here, um, you know, in this same study, um, it was, you know, found out that 167 hours are spent annually in meetings alone, right? 352 of those hours are spent talking about work, again, not actually doing the work, and 209 hours on duplicate work, right? Because we don't know the status, we don't know who's working on what, and simply put, the right hand does not know what the left hand is doing. And then, you know, to reference that first stat, the 167 hours, 103 of them are spent in unnecessary meetings. I'm sure we've all been inside of those where this could have definitely been an email, right? Or a Slack message. And so we're spending time outside of the things that we really should be doing, right? And when it comes to, you know, marketing teams, we're all here to talk about how to be better at marketing and how to do that within Asana, right? There are so many different phases and so many different applications when it comes to marketing through content, mobile marketing, social marketing, events, right? A lot more digital and remote events now, email marketing, um, product and growth marketing, so many different types of marketing efforts coming together and the work is becoming harder and harder to collaborate on. But there's hope. Asana gives us clarity, right? And so at the center, you have your team. Around that, we have the different views and what that can look like from the breakdown of our tasks to lists, views, and all the different ways that you can view the work within Asana that helps us to manage all of the different responsibilities and tasks that we're required to carry out in any, any given day or any given week. And what's great about Asana, we're gonna see a couple of them today, is the fact that the integrations that you can plug into, not only does it have an open API, 
um, where you can plug in pretty much anything to it, but there are native integrations that make the connection to work and other tools that we use easier. And so as we kind of go through, I'm gonna show you some quick examples of what this can look like, and then we're gonna jump into our demo. So again, if there are any questions, please just throw it in the Q and A. Um, but you know, when it comes to creative requests, um, this comes up all the time where you're in a project and you know something comes up and you need an addition or a change made, right? What does that look like? Is that a Slack message to your designer? Is that an email? Is that a text message? Where is that living? How is that person getting that information? And is it staying organized all in one place? What does it look like when we are launching a campaign? Do we have visibility on due dates, deadlines, and who's responsible for what, and what the dependencies are and how the work connects to the main objectives, right? We can do a lot of these things with the premium and business features within Asana. And then we're also gonna look at workload today. So to be able to get, you know, uh, uh, a real-time capacity on, on the team and understand who's overloaded, and who has you know, space to take on more work. And so when you drill down to the task level, which I'll show you when we get there, you know, we can you know, really make, um, sorry, we can move tasks around, you know, assign them to other members of the team that um, you know, can take on that work and assist us. And then I'm also gonna show you um, some proofing and approvals within Asana. And so this allows you to, again, comment in real time on the progress of work. Right, all the comments stay in one place, and the best thing, you know, they're actionable, right? So you can give an up to the minute feedback without having to leave the app. And for any designers um, on the call today, it also integrates with Adobe Creative Cloud, you know, for added flexibility. So you can see real time what's happening as you're working within Adobe and get feedback on those things from your team that happens to be in Asana. And so I mean, there are so many use cases that I can show you. I mean, we're, we're talking to um, you know small businesses today, mid-sized businesses today. It's not just for those people, right? There are our larger organizations. You know, Sony is using it for their team. You know, and they um, have reduced their production time by using Asana by seventy-five percent. You know, saving them an average of sixty hours per month. And obviously Sony is a massive company. Here's another one, Envision for any, again, creatives and designers on the call today, you'll know who these guys are, right? But, you know, they were able to reduce their planning time by 66%, right? And scale from 40 to 200 campaigns, you know, a quarter. And so I'm going to show you how we can use it to, you know, better our processes. But these are just a couple examples of how um, larger organizations are using it. And so I'm going to give like a quick do we have any questions yet? I know that was just really fast, but I know everyone's here for the demo. And so I wanna leave us some space for that. So I'll probably count to five, two, three, four, five. All right, perfect. Um, let's keep it going then. And so again, what we'll be covering um, is, is a few things. I'm gonna take a look at um, how to build a project. We're actually going to build one together today um, and show you, you know, my process and what that looks like, and then show you some of these features and how they really all come together. So just quickly, if you can bear with me, I'm just going to switch over screens here and get into our project. All right, move some of this stuff out of the way. And so what I'm gonna you know, take you through today is a, a few things, but let's just kind of get it started here. I'm just gonna pull this up really quickly. Perfect. So we're actually gonna start from scratch today. Um, obviously I've already, built this and done this a million times, but I'm going to show you what this can look like. So for the purpose of this demo, we're actually going to work as a team and plan for putting a webinar together, uh, more specifically um, this webinar, right? And so I have some assets prepared. I'm going to show you what it could look like, but understand that you can apply um, a lot of this to 
anything really. If you're planning a podcast, if you're planning a general marketing campaign and need to put together um, assets for social media, for paid ads, if you're doing a um, in-person event, a lot of these things can still apply. And so um, just wanna make sure everyone can see the Asana screen here before I keep going on. Kate, can we see that? It's okay. Let's hope we're all looking at the same thing. That's all good. Okay. It's good. It's up. It looks great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a blank project here, and we're going to call this webinar um, event. All right. I'm just going to start with a list. Um, if we had done this, if we were a webinar, you know, company and we could create a template and I can show you how to do that, but I'm just going to create this project. I'm going to create a list and close this up here. So we got some space to work with. So what I want to kind of talk through first is, you know, that, you know, the project and campaign planning. So I'm going to set up some sections for us to work within. And so I'm going to call this first one backlog because we're going to do some planning and kind of think, what do we need to do to get this webinar off the ground? I'm going to call this next section objectives. That's perfect. I'm going to call this one to do. Add another section. Uh, I'm going to call this one in progress. Uh, I'm going to call, I'm just hitting tab N, by the way, to um, let's create a new section in progress. And then we're going to call this one needs review. And then we're going to, just going to add a last one. We're going to call it done. Make it really simple. Hey, Marquis. Yes. It flipped over to your Google. We can't see Asana right now. No. Okay. Thank you. Ding. Okay. So I'm just going to put some stuff along there. So what I've done and what um, I think is just going to help us to get organized, how I like to plan projects is, is kind of like this. So we have some objectives. So in this case, for our webinar that we're planning out, um, objective number number one could be, you know, setting up, you know, the meeting link so that everyone can get here. And when everyone gets here, screen sharing works perfectly, and there are no issues. Um, we need to create, you know, graphic images. We need to set up a landing page, maybe, to send people to to register. Um, we need to um, send out an email. A bunch of you may have gotten an email um, from me earlier this week, just saying thanks for joining. Um, we need to promote it on social media and build this presentation that you're seeing or that you saw a moment ago. Um, and so these are our objectives. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take them just for, for time's sake. And under our objective section, I'm just going to, you know, kind of put them in there. Go back to our test data. And the backlog really is just the list of all the things that we need to do to get this off the ground. It, 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 they're all related to each one of these objectives. And so in this case, I've tried to just add bullets to separate them, but you know, register for Zoom webinar, write event descriptions, send out invite email to panelists. That would all go under you know, setting up the meeting link in this case. And so I'm going to you know, take all of this and I'm gonna put it into our backlog as the first three things we need to do. And I'm actually just gonna copy the rest of them over for time's sake, but understand that you know these two here, create image rough drafts, decide on winning image is all related to our second objective. These three, design landing page, insert event um, embed link is all related to creating that, that landing page. And so I'm just gonna copy the rest of these here for time's sake. There we go. And so they've all been assigned. And so what I want to do next, um, we are in the project. I want to make sure that we can stay as organized as we possibly can. And so um, what I'm going to do is kind of just go through these. I'm going to figure out which one of these tasks can we agree as a team are milestones for us. And so if you're on the free version, you, you don't have this feature. But as we kind of go along, um, decide on winning image. So the image that we're going to use for our campaign. Um, I'm going to mark that one as a milestone, right? And so what it does is it stands out. It looks a little bit different. When we get there, there's some added celebrations, right? Um, maybe I want to send out or schedule the email to be sent out. That can be a, um, a milestone as well. And then another one that we can add, review presentation. Maybe that can be a milestone. Because when we get there, we know we're on track. We know, you know we're going to meet our deadline. Great. 
Um, what I'm also going to do too is make it so that, you know, these image drafts that our designer is going to have to create, we want someone to be able to approve them, right? We want to see that. We want to know that it's approved so we can actually move on. And so they feel good that their um, part of the job is completed. So I'm going to actually going to change that to mark for approval. And as you can see, it gives us a few different options here. We can once the um, artwork is uploaded, we can request changes, we can reject the artwork, we can approve the artwork. And so I'm going to add that one in there. One other thing that I'll do is give us a time frame for this project. And so if we go to the overviews tab, there's a whole bunch of things you can do. We can add in our other project members. We can see our milestones at a glance, but I'm just going to give us a due date, right? And so our starting date, is going to be today. And uh, where our webinar is going to be on Friday, the 26th. So we're giving us some uh, ourselves some time to get this planned out. And so we can see that there. We can see that we have one person in the project right now. And I'm going to switch back to our list view. The next thing I'm going to do is bring us through um, how to create uh, custom fields. This is probably one of my favorite uh, tools within Asana and again, underutilized tools, I think. So under customize, we're going to come in and we're going to um, sorry about that. We're going to come in and we are going to add a field. And so, like I said, I've already done this um, and they're here. So I'm going to show you how to get one going and then we're going to pull the rest of them in. And so what I'm going to um, create first as a custom field is going to be um, our, our project status. And so I'm just going to call it project status. Right here, you can have the option to have a drop-down project status. You can, you know, create a text-based project status or a number, right? And there's different options for what that can look like, currencies if you're doing budgets. Um, but within this case, I'm going to create my first project status, which is backlog. The second one, as we know, is objectives. In Scrum and project management, we call them stories. Um, they typically won't move, but again, there are our guiding stars, so we know where we're going. The next we have to do, uh, we have in progress, we have needs review, and then we have done, right? And so you have the option here um, on some of the other feature, on some of the other levels to add it to your library so you can use it for other projects. You can um, have the option to that when these change, you can notify a task collaborator. We're not going to do that in this case. And you can make it so that no one else can actually change uh, these custom fields. And so only you can edit them. So I'm going to keep that checked off. Um, I'm not going to add it to the library right now because, again, I've already done it. Um, so I'm just going to pull it in. But that's what that would look like. You can change the colors of these. You can come back and edit them at any time that you want to. So I'm actually going to cancel out of that. And instead, um, if you click on this little plus sign, or you can go to customize and add it there. I'm going to go from library, and then there it is. We have our project status. I'm also going to add in a couple others that are going to be really helpful for this project. I'm going to update the objective number. And then I'm also going to add one more custom field for our brief demo, and that is responsibility. So. It's always important to know who is doing it as well as, you know, when it's due. And so Marquee. what's nice about, um, are we back? Looks great. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going then. So I'm going to show you a couple of these examples because I want to leave some time for questions if there are any. But um, with these new added fields, we can slip them around in time. If you're used to using like a monday.com or something like that, then um, these can really come in handy. So what I'm going to do is set the project status and you're going to see how it updates as we go through the project. So if I select all, I'm going to make these all backlog for now. Okay, I'm going to set the objectives um, here as well. So objectives one through six, we already created these. And the reason why we do this is as the cards or as the tasks um, continue to move throughout the project, it can get a bit messy. And so we want to keep everything organized. In this case, I'm going to change my sorting to objective number so that no matter what happens, I can see everything in you know, sequential order. And then if we go back to our, our list here, I can say, okay, so as far as setting up the meeting link goes, who's responsible for that? Um, I'll say project manager in this case, create design images, our designer, set up landing page, uh, maybe our development team, 
email um, contact list. Um, I'm the one that actually did that in this case. And so promote on social media, um, social media manager, and then build the presentation. And again, I'm the one that did that. And so the goal is to assign um, these responsibilities or these you know, tasks to their objectives. And so um, just kind of quickly, this won't really matter, but I just want to show you what that can look like. Again, I'm not following it exactly, but I just want to show you how um, we can keep things, you know, really organized as we kind of go through. There we go. Um, the last thing we want to do is obviously assign all of these things to somebody. So um, for these here, I'm going to assign these tasks to myself. I'm going to assign these tasks to a team member, Prison Mike. Thanks for being here, Mike. Uh, I'm going to assign these to Ditto Ditto. Uh, I'm going to assign these tasks to, you know, Monica, our 90s sitcom star. And then these last three I'll assign to myself. So we always want to have assignees. We always want to have due dates. So I'll go through and do that same thing. I'll add some due dates here as well. Um, this is the quickest way to do it. There are tools that can cascade. Um, these due dates automatically based on your, your campaign length. But for this um, exercise, we're just going to do it all um, manually. And understand once this gets set up, you never really have to do this again. Um, and so there we go. Um, what I'll also do here is set um, objective numbers so we can keep it moving. And so Again, imagine your own use case. Is this a podcast? Is this a um, content calendar or an editorial calendar, right? Think of how you can apply this to your, your own agency, your own marketing team. Um, are you a design shop? And what can that look like? So great. We've got all of our custom fields set up. We've got our assignees. We've got our due dates. Now we want to start obviously moving through our project. And so one way you could do it is you can take, you know, your backlog um, card and you can move it to to do and, you know, you can assign a date when it gets there um, and then we can change the status of it, you know, from project status to to do. Um, maybe we can change the responsibility to me. Right. And so we can do all that manually or what I'm going to show you next is how to use rules and automations to do it for you. And so I'll put that back over there for now. Um, and so the way to do this is you go into customize and then you're gonna go to rules. So we're gonna add some rules to this project. Um, on your um, premium plan, you can see, you know, predetermined um, rules here. You lose the ability to add custom rules. Um, I really like custom rules because um, they're, they're simple and we can get really um, dialed into what we want it to do. So what I'm actually going to do first, I'm going to talk through it and then build it. So we already know that all of our tasks will start in the backlog here. Um, what we want it to do is that it, as it moves through the different sections to do in progress, needs review, and done, that all of these custom fields update automatically we can assign new due dates to them and we can assign new team members to them as we go through those stages as well. And so in this case, I'm going to add our first rule. Um, and so you have triggers and then you have actions as well. So I'm gonna make it so that a task moved to a certain section, okay? It's now prompting me to put in an action. I'm actually gonna go back and put in another trigger because I wanna do something a bit different. Um, I want to um, make it so that a task moved to a certain section or that project status is changed um, creates a specific action. So if we click into them, I want to make it so that when a task is moved to to-do, as well as when the status is updated to to-do, that and a, a certain action is taken. And you want to watch this right here because it will make it so that you can choose from when all of these triggers happen or when any of these triggers happen. So I wanna make it as flexible as possible. I'm gonna switch it to when any of these triggers happen, right? And then the action from there is pretty straightforward. We want to set the project status, right, to to do, and we want to move the task to a certain section to do as well. That is pretty much it. Maybe we want to, um, you know, add, um, a new responsibility. Um, we also, sorry, we want to do one more thing. We want to set the objective number, 
as well. And so that objective, if it was for, um, uh, you know, creative or whatever the case may be, we, we can we can do that as well. And so um, we have we have some options there. So in this case, we're going to create this rule, and you're going to see what's going to happen. You see this little lightning bolt kind of pop up here. And so one or two things will happen. We'll move the card over there. There we go. Asana does some cool stuff down there. There we go. It worked. If I click into the task right here um, and I change this to to-do, Asana is going to do its thing down here. Because again, when either of these actions are taken, it moves it through there. And so it's still assigned to me. That's great. Um, so we're moving through. I'm gonna do two more of these so you can see how powerful this can be. And then I'm gonna show you how to get um, new tasks added in here. So I'm gonna go back to customize again. I'm gonna add another rule that when, actually I'll show you first, that when we get to the needs review tile that the project manager is alerted and we're actually gonna set who that project manager is. So we're gonna make Monica the project manager in this case, and we're gonna add a rule here. So. Um, I'll make this one really simple. I'll just do half of it. So we're going to make it that when uh, a task is moved to a certain section, needs review, um, we're going to assign that task to one person on our team. Um, we are going to um, set the project status to uh, needs review. There it is. Um, and that responsibility, we're going to change that to the project manager as well. So we create that rule. And actually, I'm gonna show you one more thing. With the newest integration, um, Asana um, has partnered with Slack and Jira and Microsoft Teams to add in other customizations. So if we wanted to, we could actually notify a channel in Slack when this happens or send, it, uh, send a direct message to someone in Slack as well if we wanted to. And so I'm gonna actually take uh, one from our backlog and I'm gonna go to in needs review and you're going to see Asana do its thing here. And it's going to update. There we go. So now it's updated to needs review. Um, it's been assigned to the project manager, which in this case is Monica. But what if we wanted to go a step further? Because you know February 17th was the original date where it needed to be created. And so let's just go with today, for example. Let's update this to today. Right, but we said, hey, Monica, we need this back within three business days because we got to get it to this department so that they can continue doing their jobs. So I'm just going to add one more um, action to this rule. We can just go back in and edit it. And then we can actually set a due date. And so with this option, you can decide how many days in the future you want um, to give this person. And so uh, maybe we'll give them four days and we'll save that rule again. So now, we, when we move any of our um, needs review tasks over, it's gonna do its thing, great. And then it's given us four days from today for the project manager, Monica in this case, to review that task. The last rule that I'm gonna show you um, is what happens when we get to here? What happens when a task is actually completed? So this is the last one I'll show you here and then we will move on. And so what we want to have done is that um, when a task, again, I'll just do half of it. I won't do the status change, but when a task is moved to the done section, you just kind of have to talk through it sometimes. Um, we want to have that task completed, right? Um, so, and then we want to set that project status to done as well. Maybe we want to notify someone in a channel, hey, we've reached this milestone, or hey, this task is done, just to keep everyone informed. But we won't do that just yet. And so in this case, let's pull over something from our backlog, assuming we've done everything we need to do along the way. And it's going to complete that task for us and get it out of here and obviously change the status to done. Um, if I had completed the full automation, um, and you know, made it so that if you click this or actually change the status in here, the same thing would have happened. And so, okay, I think we're in a good spot for now. Are there any questions yet, Kate? If you could um, answer the one that came in from Julia yeah. regarding the approvals, because I tried to do it myself, but I think you may have some better suggestions. 
Sure. Yeah. So if I'm remembering correctly, there are two people that need approval on, on that. Um, That's right. It looks like the designer and then herself, Julia. Mm -hmm. So wondering whether it's best to create two tasks, one assigned to each person, yeah. or whether it should be subtasks or sure. even a third option. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's a few different, you know, things that you can do, um, Julia. So we can either add another section for another person that needs to be, uh, that needs it to be reviewed. If we wanted to, we could create a custom rule that said once, you know, this person approves it, it gets assigned to another person. Um, subtasks, yes, are great. Um, if you have a template just to make sure that that, th that doesn't get missed. Um, there are a few different ways um, we can achieve that. Um, but I, I would personally, if there were two levels of, of approvals, I'd want to see two different sections so that everyone on the team knows who's approving it. Um, sometimes subtasks aren't as visible as we want them to be. We kind of have to click into them, right? So I'd want to see them, you know, kind of like this in, in, uh, in a linear fashion. But good question. So the other question, Marquis, uh, that came yeah. in through the chat, we're using the basic version and I understand timeline and milestones are only available in premium. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Yeah. Um, what I want to be able to show you if screen share works for us is yeah, what you unlock at the different levels, what premium gives you and then what business gives you, because yeah, there are certain things you can only get at the top level. Um, but I'm giving you an overview today of, of everything. If, if you had the full suite, um, but yeah, good question. I'm going to cover that um, towards the end. So what I want to show you next is um, as we're building our webinar, things are kind of coming along, but we need another graphic, for example. We need something um, and our designer needs to get that information. So like I said off the top, where is that happening? Is that an email to the designer? Is that in Slack? Is it getting lost somewhere? Is it never getting done because no one knows? And so I want to show you how we can use Asana Forms in this case to help with that. So I'm just going to add a cover photo to this. You can edit this as you want to. So I'm going to webinar event design requests is what I'll call this. Um, there we go. We can add a description. Um, what do you need? This is a very busy designer. Um, so we can put in their name, their email. Um, we can add the paragraph. So um, describe your need. Right there, we can make it required. We can have it so that they update or they can add, you know, attachments to it as well. Um, we can have a, you know, date that they need it by. When do you need this, right? We can do so many things. And with the multi-select option, I'll just give you an, an example of what that looks like. Um, what sizes do you need, right? And so we can, you know, add questions here. And so we can go, I need a square, I need widescreen, or I need, I don't know, portrait. Um, there we go. Uh, there we go. Um, and so these are different options. And so if they were to select square, for example, right? We can add a branch, right? So we're using a bit of conditional logic here. Um, so if they do select square, um, we can ask them for, you know, more information. Um, so what dimensions, if I could spell today, what dimensions, right? And so um, they can, you know, put their, their answer in here. And so now I think we're, we're ready to, to, re to preview it. Actually, I'm, I'm hesitant to open up the the, the link, because I don't want screen sharing to bug up again, but this would give us a live link that we can share with anyone, anywhere. So this could be for our internal team. It can be for an external stakeholder, anyone outside of Asana. Um, I should note that if their email address is in here, they will get a copy of this. So if there's sensitive information or um, things that you don't want anyone else to see publicly, if it's a private project, I would just remove that. Um, but I'm not going to show you what that view looks like because I'm afraid that screen sharing will, won't work for us. But um, when this is submitted, um, it actually shows up 
in the top section of our project. So I think that's one of the, the biggest things that I see when, when we talk with um, agencies is that they have all these requests and the designer is overloaded and they're bogged down and they can't see you know, where things are. So it would show up in here as a task. We'd be able to see all the information that I submitted, the images we uploaded, they would also be here, right? And then um, one thing that I didn't show you is in the settings area, we can choose who we want that to be assigned to. So if Prison Mike was our designer, all of these forms that are submitted are automatically assigned to him once they come in. So again, just removing that manual labor um, uh, every single time. And so we can you know, change our message here that we want them to see when something is completed, um, but that is forms. And again, that would show up in the, the top section here. And so, um, what I will show you before we go to the, the next kind of section is your view. Every time you switch out, it is going to change. If you want everyone on your team to see this view, or sorry, every time you come in to see this view, I always just like, you know, saving layout as default. So no matter like how many times I leave the screen and come back, I'm seeing the same view and I'm having to look through this here. Um, another view that we can um, look at is our timeline. So remember we set some, some due dates. And so we can see those due dates, you know, kind of spanned out here, the ones that are in the backlog, ones that are in to-do and then needs review. And what's great is you can slip and slide these around. If you need, do need to change those dates, anything that is unscheduled, um, test data, for example, you can pull it from the side, you can um, review those details and then we can uh, remove it if we, if we don't want to have it in that project as well. So um, this is a really um, great view. And so the next thing I wanna show you is how we keep it organized. So if you are the marketing manager, if you are a project manager, if you are in leadership and you don't have the time to be coming in and seeing you know, exactly where everything is at and you, just, and you have a lot of projects to manage, the best way to stay aligned is to use portfolios. And so um, at the premium level, you would have access to this, but then you miss out on some of the other features. So I have a portfolio set up here that's called active projects. And so you can see my other tests there. I'm gonna add the webinar event that we're working on to this view. So there it is right there. We've added it into this view. Um, we can see at a glance, where is it? There it is. We can see at a glance, you know, what's overdue. We can see what percentage of the project has been completed. Um, we can even change that if we wanted to view it in milestones. We know we have three, right? Zero milestones have been completed, right? So we can change that view. We can look at different approval stages. Um, and so I'm actually going to put this into ready for review and it's going to couple it with the other projects that are ready for review. So if we go into timeline now, we can see all of our projects. So no longer do we have to guess about when we can start projects. Um, no longer do we need to overload ourselves on when we can start projects or tell our clients when we can start. We can see exactly where our projects are. And in this view, we can extend the due dates really quickly. We can move things around. Um, if things are overlapping, we can move them around as well. And so it updates the status of your project as you um, go along. One of the tools that um, I really love and think, again, is underutilized is, is workload. And so workload, what it does is it gives a realistic view of who on your team is, um, again, overloaded, what they're working on, and what that capacity looks like for their team. So if I were to go back to a webinar event and I were to say, um, actually, before we do that, I'll get back over here and talk to you about how we, we figure that out. <clears throat> there we go. So we have a couple of things we need to do first. Um, when you first load up your, your workload, you're gonna see something called an effort. It's gonna say add effort, okay? In this case, um, our effort 
is estimated hours. So you can change it. If you are a, a, a marketing team or a shop that has points and that's how you figure out your budgets. If you're using real dollars, if you're using you know, lifetime spend, if you have a daily budget, um, you can change the effort by which we can see this workload. And then from here, you can also edit that capacity. So with me and my you know, three team members, our estimated hours per person for each week is 35 hours. That's your, your working week, let's say. And so what it does is it takes our Monday to Friday, typical working hours, and it breaks that down into days. We go set capacity, and that's what we're seeing here. And so you can see in this case, ditto, ditto, his daily capacity, he's at four hours worked out of seven, okay? Um, Monica, in this case, she's at a seven out of seven. If she takes on any more work, for this day, she'll be overloaded and she won't be able to effectively get her job done. And so um, I'm going to get back to this event for a little bit and show you how to set that. So the first time that you set up estimated hours at the project level, it will assign it to all the active projects in the portfolio. In this case, we don't yet have that column. So I'm actually going to choose it from our library. I'm going to go estimated hours and it's going to add that column right here for us. And so because we have due dates, because we have um, something assigned to every person, it's going to allow us to um, put in estimated hours. So let's just assume for a minute that you know these tasks here, they're each gonna take one hour. We just put in that one. These tasks are gonna take five hours. These ones will take three, I'm just guessing here. Um, and then maybe a review presentation and the remaining tasks are going to take six hours. Okay, so I'll just assign this one here quickly for, for this doesn't really matter. But now we have an understanding and it helps you at the planning stage of your project too, to know generally how long it's going to take. So setting up that meeting link, maybe it took half an hour, 0.5, create graphics, five hours, set up landing page, maybe we need 10 hours for that. Um, email contact list, one hour, and so on and so on. And so it gives you a summary at the end of it, how many hours are allotted for all those tasks. So based on what's in our backlog, we still have 60 hours of work that we need to complete as a team. And so where this really helps is again, we go back to the portfolio, we go to our active project and in workload and man, things have gotten really, really busy. So for myself, on this day, I'm over capacity, right? So then what can we do? We can simply move some stuff around, right? I mean, obviously we can't move it to the past. That wouldn't make any sense. But uh, if we did move it ahead, right? It levels out my, my workload. And no, it doesn't because I have a webinar test. So maybe the webinar test, um, I move it to this Monday, the 22nd. And there we go, it balances out my capacity. Same with Monica. You can see, wow, she's got 22 hours worth of work in one day. She's never going to get that done, right? So we can move this stuff around and really get um, a realistic picture of um, where everyone's at. And again, be able to plan for the future, right? It's never good to see these red spikes, right? Obviously, that's not going to happen, the 23 hours in, in one working day. So we want to be able to, um, as a project manager, as a marketing manager, look at these things, and um, be able to you know, move things around in time to better um, our team's efficiency and productivity. And so um, we're getting close to the end. Um, I, I wanna open it up to questions if there are any more, but th there is so much that you can do with Asana. Obviously we went really quickly today um, and I showed you really high level how you can use some of the, um, the added features. Um, but if you are, you know, here today, I said that, you know, I had a special treat for you. Um, I want to offer you a 45 minute demo where we can go through your instance of Asana, talk about your specific questions and figure out how to apply a lot of this and a lot of what we do every day for our clients to your specific business. Um, and so just quickly, are there any questions and has anything come up, Kate? Yes, we've got a couple questions here. Um, one of them is, have you found a way to customize the notifications Asana sends to Slack when the two are integrated? 
we found that Asana was totally taking over the connected channels and we decided to disconnect because of that. Yeah, that's a good point. I think because it's a new integration, um, they're not quite there. When you connect Slack, you have the option to assign it to a channel. Um, and, and then, you know, you have a custom message that you can put in. Um, it hasn't quite figured out personalization yet. So we can't add tasks or tags. We can't tell it what types of messages we want it to send. It is just a direct um, offload of everything that's happening in Asana to Slack. So um, if what I'd recommend is setting up specific channels for those Asana notifications. Um, like we get a lot of HubSpot notifications for a deal activity that happens. That's not coming to any personal channels or any shared channels. It's going to what we call HubSpot activity. And so if I see a red there, maybe it's at 27 notifications. I don't know. I know that they're there and I can review them, but it's not taking away from my workload and productivity. Thank you. Um, the other question that came in is, can some people on the team, such as managers, upgrade to premium or business, or does the whole team have to upgrade? Really good question. And so, um, no, you do not have to upgrade and have a premium team. So if your marketing team needs a lot of these features, you can upgrade um, to a paid premium team or business team within your free organization. You can do that. Um, there are added perks to obviously being able to um, see the other projects and see the other tasks that are related, but no, you do not have to do a full upgrade. You can do it by team. And then a, will estimated hours only show under the main task? Or is there any workaround to be able to use it in subtasks for workload planning? Mm, good question. Yeah, um, it's not there yet. Estimated hours is not connected to subtasks just yet. Um, there's been a lot of feedback. I know it's on the product roadmap, just based on the feedback from other solutions partners, other users, um, that even in like workload and timeline, we'd love to be able to see what's happening in the subtasks. Um, but not just yet. And so in a lot of cases, um, what people do is add like a dependency to another task. Um, and I didn't show you how to do that just now, but if you add a dependency to another task, it stays at the task level. And then you know that it's related to that first task um, without having to drill down into the subtasks. All right. Any other questions? Let's see here. Does a sauna allow for guests like Slack? Yes, it does. Um, and so I'm gonna try and share my screen one last time here. If it doesn't work, then I'll just kind of call it out. But um, can everyone see that? Basic, we have some features here. Looks great. Awesome. So um, as you can see on the basic or free plan, you can get up to 15 users, period, end of story. When you get to premium, you can have unlimited free guests. Um, so a guest is someone that doesn't have the same company domain email as you. So everyone at thinkdiddle.com um, will come in, they're automatically a member, but if it was marquee.murray at gmail.com, they're a guest and you can have unlimited guests. They can be private to channels so that guests can't see each other, but you can have an unlimited number of those people. Um, these are some of the other features, just as we're getting to our last minute here. Um, at timeline, you get unlocked to, um, at premium, sorry, you get an unlock to the timeline, dashboards, advanced search, custom fields, again, um, customized forms, you get the rules and automations, project milestones, and a couple other um, cool perks. At the business level is where you would unlock portfolios, goals, which we didn't review today, workload, which I went over, and that custom rule builder approvals and, and things of that, that nature. So again, what I would love to do is um, I'm offering that 45 minute walkthrough of your space. Um, typically I do give a time frame around this. So it is 2 p.m. Eastern as of right now. Um, if within the next 20 minutes um, we get an email um, by going to thinkditto.com slash meeting, I'm going to put it up right there, thinkdiddo.com slash meeting. Um, you can book a time with me to review your instance. It's free of charge, no strings attached. 
20 minutes from now. If it comes in at 25 minutes, I promise I'll delete it. People don't often believe me when I do that, but um, I'd love to connect with you. And so if you got benefit from this, thank you so much for being here. I'd love to connect again. Um, you can send me an email at marquee at think ditto, or again, book a meeting at thinkditto.com slash meeting. Uh, any last questions that I missed when I was rambling there, Kate? I haven't seen any. If anybody has a final question, quick type it in. Awesome. Okay. Well, again, thank you for being here today. My name is Marquis from Ditto. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to connecting with you later on. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.